So, uh, kind of a blue-black tempo deck, basically. We've got, uh, got a bunch of cheap and sweet pirates here, and then we've got uh, some lookouts dispersals and some admirals orders and some other some other quality removal here. So we'll see we'll see how this goes. This deck, like many of the decks that we play here on stream, is a viewer submitted deck list. Hey, is this the LMAO? Thank you very much for the seven month resubscription there. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Welcome back. What's going on, RDN? Hate to waste it on standard. Have you played the standard format? The standard format seems pretty sweet so far. It's got it's got some combo decks in it. It's got some aggro decks. It's got some tempo decks. Evening, Tris. Where am I at for the change of scenery? I am at my upstairs computer, so using my uh, system that I had set up before I built built my new my new box downstairs. Uh, you can't register at Grand Prix the day of. You have to register in advance online. And Rogue, thank you for the brand new Prime support there. I appreciate that. Welcome. How are the game bound game sounds in relation to my sound? Are the game sounds loud compared to me? Are they quiet compared to me? I go first. Sounds good, Green Sky. Can you respond to my email or the reminder of that? I'm going to mulligan this. If that was an untapped land, we'd keep it. That's really unfortunate. I think, uh, I think I'd give you close seven and done keepable six on that mulligan. Yeah, the, uh... The mono blue tempo deck actually do. So target attacking pirate gets stuff. Um, the mono blue tempo deck we played on stream on Tuesday. It definitely, definitely competitive and actually very cheap to build. It has like four rares and it costs like less than fifty bucks to build on paper. And it's probably pennies to build online. So got to got to gobble up their creature there. Interesting that they didn't play this pre-combat. I wonder what wonder what that means. A little way to kill our, our two one though. So we got we got a, we got a two for one there. Um, we're gonna need a couple of two for ones like that probably to catch back up. Uh, this card generates some sweet card advantage. So it's a one one for one that uh, explores by exiling two cards from the opponent's discard pile. If we hit the land drop here, we'll probably hostage take her. Arena is incredibly smooth. Flame of Kelp. Interesting. These have like lands in their hand. What are we? What are we bidding here? It land on another Flame of Kelp. That makes sense. Um. I guess this takes two to activate and two to correct the clue, so I might as well just pass here. Hey, Captain Awesome. Thank you very much for the brand new Prime support there. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. So this is like... Like Super Mana Leak here. Oh, it's Explore, not Investigate. Why did I think it was Investigate? It was a keyword. I'm just used to keywords. So maybe I should have done that. This is a little bit worse than, than a clue. What does this do? It's 2 0 until end of turn, sure. 
and grab grab their dork here. I'm gonna keep this back to block. Yeah, I decided I wanted to do some standard tonight. As opposed to the Warhammer. So they could firebrand the hostage taker here since they have the plus damage from the Flame of Kel. I think that's still a win for us. We don't get to play their goblin out, but we're not taking a bunch of damage here either, which is nice. Is the is the deckmaster plugin working? Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and trade here because that's going to deal extra damage. So 2-2 two, two is also 2-2 two, two flash, so we'll just pass. So they can make this thing larger, right? It gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. Maybe I'm supposed to play this to block. Play McKeld, sure. Maybe we're supposed to play this to block. So this thing like theoretically steals tokens, but that's really not not particularly great. I'm just gonna leave this back as a blocker. We're kind of playing from behind since so we started down so far in cards this game. Their second flame of Keld. Kent's gonna be working off all of his own stuff, Chef Seth. I'm gonna be just gonna be hosting his his channel when I when I head offline, and sharing some of his posts on social media. So everything everything that gets added to my queue will be played by me. That's uh, that's what people are signing up for. So he's get to trade here. Enters the battle for the 1 1 counter if you attack this turn. 2 2 first strike is annoying for the cards that currently have in hand. A daring saboteur. Hmm, I guess this is a reason to leave lands in my hand. So I'm still at 17 here. The Flame of Keld is going to give them extra damage this turn, but I'm still at 17, so like if I take 4 from here, I'm only going to 13. And they have a land and a Goblin War Chief, I'm sure. What's going on, Duntix? Thank you very much for the brand new Prime support there. Welcome, I appreciate that. So I'm gonna go ahead and Dire Fleet Poisoner block this uh, trade here. I'm gonna take four here, but then hopefully the uh, the Saboteur is gonna allow us to generate some card advantage here. Really wish I would have kept land in hand. Well, we drew a brick for the turn, so I got and get to loot with this at least. So if this stays in play, our average card quality should be much higher than theirs. Is gets minus one, minus one, and create a one one. Sure. So, not very useful against the 2 2, but hopefully at some point in the future. Yep. But the saboteur gets to keep just like turning. Gets to keep turning lands into spells. That would be absurd for us. What does this do? Return target creature or return two target pirates from my graveyard to my hand. That's actually really good. Uh, I would like hostage taker and uh, did I did I track her please? Maybe I'm supposed to wait till next turn to do this so I can play it right away. When was the last time you were like, man, I kind of feel like playing some standard right now? Um, cons, when cons was legal. Yeah, when cons was legal. It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while since we, since I, I woke up and was like, I was like sitting around like, you know what I want to do? I want to play some standard tonight, some magic standard. Magic standard format has been real bad for a while now. All right, so I have my orders probably pretty bad here. I want to trim some of these counter spells in order to just like have more more ways to interact with their things on the cheap. I didn't mind cons with origins. 
I think there's some people that weren't a huge fan of that format, but I thought it was a kind of okay. Siren, Storm Tamer. I think I'm in the market for this. I don't know. What does this card do? Creates a 2 2. Whatever creature control. I feel like they're probably not in the market for a Jace, right? Maybe this is too many rituals of soot. Although I also kind of get to like control when I ritual of soot. And I have these four drops. Let's, let's try this. Yeah, sounds great. I have to shock myself on one, which sucks a little bit, but I've got Fungal Infection, Cast Down, Storm Tamer, Ritual, so a lot of just good cards here. I both wasn't a big fan of Energy, and I wasn't a big fan of the Gods in Almond Cat. I think both those, both those created pretty negative play pattern experiences. All right, definitely shocking this in. and just gonna, let's just fungally infect this guy here. Are there strategies that give Tempo a hard time? Um, I think generically removal heavy decks tend to be kind of hard for Tempo decks because Tempo decks tend to be kind of threat light. So removal heavy decks can like play through play through what the Tempo deck's trying to execute. I think I am just hanging tight for a turn or two here. I'm just going to let them play out play out their hand to the board and just like ritual sit on four here. Yeah, perfect. Because like they're a flame of Keld deck, right? So like they probably they probably want to just like get as many things as possible and going on. Get their hand empty so they can flame of Keld. Can only block creatures with flying. When Dream Caller Siren into battlefield you control another pirate. Uh tap up to two target not land permanent, sure. Interesting they aren't attacking. That's weird. Alright, I'm gonna show you the biggest warning flag in the world. If you ever wanna like scream sweeper from the rooftop, attack with your only blocker. I think I'm happy with this. Just like frag the board. Nice one one. Um I think I'm just passing here, so I can uh I can actually dream caller this turn because ritual of soot doesn't kill our our, our four cost each troops, so I get to go ahead and do this and, like, not worry about killing my own thing here, which is nice. Like, they could have Lightning Strike here. They could also be, like, sitting on three mana spells, but they could also... Whoa! I love the animations of this game. They're so good. Uh, this is our first match with the deck, so... I don't really know that I know what's good or bad. Yeah, but I'm just gonna pack it in there. Yay, rewards! Lurking Chupacabra. Creature explores, target creature to opponent controls. That's interesting. Limited fodder. I may have changed my name because I did the effectiveness of the pun. It wasn't worth forcing people to remember my preferred IRL name, Nick Bolas. I understand. Evening, Snyawaka. This is going to be a long stream tonight because I am going to, you know... I'm going to be up for my, my normal modern stream tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., but I felt like playing some standards, so I figured I'd fire up for a little bit. Ooh, autofocus. Autofocus. Evening deleted. It's always fun streaming at some off times. You catch uh, catch some people that can't watch during the day. Can't seem fine. It's got a curve. Yeah, Tine Star. Standard seems really sweet right now. I am enjoying my time spent playing it.
I did not. I don't uh, always get as much time as I would necessarily like to consume consume other content. So this is cancel unless if we have at attacked, it's better than cancel. Yeah, when I'm playing, so Arena's an actual video game with like sound effects and stuff. It's not just like a spreadsheet emulator. So uh, I like the Arena sounds. So I listen. I listen to. Uh, I listen to the sounds while we while I play. So I get to go ahead and attack here. And if they block, I get to play another Dire Fleet Poisoner and just, like, pump up this one. Yeah, you take it. Slide this island out so I can put this Watery Grave. Legion War Boss. Pretty sure that's a, that's a no-go. It's the, the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, blah, 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 wannabe. The, uh, Goblin Rebel Master wannabe. Hostage taker, sign me up. That one, please. Uh, I actually do have a dedicated microphone now. So a couple of weeks ago, I didn't, but I actually went out and bought a... Uh, I went out and bought um, a second uh, Blue Yeti for up here. I just have the headset on because, again, I like the sounds of my headset. Oh, no, I can stay right there. Go ahead and pass. This has first strike as well, right? So this one can attack into here next turn. Sure. Vaguely romantic, but a Keyforge ends up having a digital client that's something. No, I think Keyforge's distribution model is idiotic, which is a shame because their gameplay is kind of sweet. But I don't understand their distribution model is just it's just rancid. There's no there's no other way to describe it other than idiotic or rancid. Which is a shame because their gameplay was sweet. It was funny. My buddy and I demoed it at Gen Con, and it's the first time. I've ever demoed something and like walked away from a demo going that gameplay was great but I would never give them money because their distribution model sucks all right so we're gonna diddle the chain whirler and the baronet here I think just gonna save them a hot second and do this here Uh, if he blocked, I have Dire Fleet Poisoner here in my hand. But she can give an attacker plus one, plus one. So that's why I've been attacking into this Chain Whirler pretty aggressively. Why? They didn't have any cards in their hand. I'm just, like, saving everybody time by letting them know that they, they're, they shouldn't keep doing it. And I'm poor. We just played against this person. Played against this person twice in a row. Just ladder things, I guess. Yeah, well, that happens on Magic Online too, I suppose. I value, I value life EP. Yep. The the technically correct but doesn't actually matter is not something is not something you'll find me doing particularly often. Um. I think I'm gonna keep this. Like, it needs a blue source, obviously, but like, I've got a bunch of castables here. Like, fungal infection's pretty good. It's good, clean living here. Get that one out. Just draw island right away, like a professional. This whole streaming with only two monitors things takes me back. 
Oh, I don't I don't get the thing because they sack it. Okay. Maybe that means I should wait. Yeah, maybe that means I should wait on the fungal infection. That's probably a small mistake on my part. So I assume this is about to die here, but that's fine. Yeah, that's fair. As long as that's in play, the infections are resolving. That's probably a good way to look at it. I just have to pass back here, hope and hit another land next turn so we can start slamming these hostage takers. Perfect. I think I would like to take the 2-2 two -two to start because this way if they kill my hostage taker they don't get another goblin token out of it. They have like a lightning strike or something. If they do kill her, I have March of the Drowned to pick them back up at some point. I think I'm just going to play this as a 1-1. One, one. Am I? I think I'm just going to play this as a 1-1. One, one. Lookout's Dispersal is nothing to be scoffed at either, right? Like, Mana Leak's a great card, and this card is, like, better than Mana Leak if you have a pirate. Set that one up to 14 here. 2 3 is a pretty big, pretty big body on this board, too, which is nice. Just like hostage taker replay their one one. I think so. Thanks for the cards. Yeah, I'm streaming for my upstairs system, which has windows on it. Hopefully, I'll be able to get that set up on my downstairs computer. If I can't get it running under wine, I might bite the bullet and uh, throw another hard drive in there with windows on it so we can use it. Alright, let's get into something different. We've, we've, beat, we've played against the Mono Red Goblin player twice now. Evening Zanman. I mean, if you have specific things that require Windows, it's easier to just install Windows a lot of the time. There are certain things that, like, just work, so, like, everything sans, like, this plugin extension just works from Android Linux, so I don't have any issues with it. But if your operating system is making your life harder, you should probably just use something that makes it easier. I think Arena's great. The only reason we weren't trying Arena initially is because standard with Kaladesh I found pretty rancid, but this standard format seems sweet, and Arena is great software. Yeah. I can I just saboteur here? Are we supposed to kite sail and take a peek behind the veil? looking like could be like a, statistically it's the mono blue deck so i think i'm gonna saboteur to start dream caller siren's probably absurd in this matchup kite sail fruit is probably not bad either there's also an argument for like jamming kite sail here to grab their curiosity and yeah, that's probably what i'm supposed to do i'm probably supposed to kite sail and take their take their enchantment if they have one charter course deal that means our saboteur is gonna get to smack them That's that's a big deal, Anironic. 
in a rock. Like, you gotta remember, Standard's not modern. It doesn't have this massive pool full of a ton of playable cards, right? Like, the the best deck in the format losing a bunch of its key pieces, like, things rotated. Like, we got we got a new set full of reasonable cards and things rotated. Like, that that is very much a big deal. I think I'm gonna ditch this. Uh, I'm gonna ditch the Opt, actually. The rest of my hand is, like, pretty good. I'm gonna play this rather than Lookout Dispersal. Although, I guess they could have the Jin here, so maybe I'm supposed to hold that up. They do not have a Jin. They have a Curious Obsession, so we're going to take that one away. Sounds good, Nebeck. Drive safe. We have a Wizard's Retort here, and this is a Pirate Wizard, right? Yeah, JoJo, that is, that, that is one of their stated goals to eventually get to. A point where we're doing things like that on Arena. Their, their goal is to turn magic into an eventual esport. And putting something like Arena is the way they can do that. Well, Anorak, like... I think red is definitely still going to be competitive, but, like, there's a big difference between red previously and red now, right? Like, Beaumont Courier and, um... Beaumont Courier... Look at, look at this! Look at this tempo mirror. Just, like, combat trick, counter, counter your counter. Uh, I do not ever recall hearing anything like that. Like, like, the red deck being good, a red deck being good and competitive is generally a sign of a healthy format. A red deck being unbeatable is not a sign of a healthy format. Chandra has a ripple marker here. Sc uh, scrap Peep Scrounger to, to a degree. Alright, so this is definitely another Ritual of Sup matchup. This is another Hostage Shaker matchup too, honestly. Crafty Cut Purse this is not a matchup for him. I'm gonna trim. Oh, the castaways, these are flying. It's a 2 2. They do not fly, so probably not worth it. I'm 2 for 2 on boarding out the Jace here, which is probably not a good sign for our boy. I kind of wish I had a little bit more spot removal on my sideboard. I have 59 cards at the moment. Probably don't mind the blink of the eye. The blink of an eye should probably just be a piece of spot removal. I'm gonna leave Lookout's dispersal in. Yeah, I think there's a good chance this card is bad. If it if it is good, it's not in matchups like this, right? If this card is good, it's going to be good against uh, more controlling decks. So. Or do people concede quicker on Arena? Um, I mean, people... I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think slightly lower stakes encourages people to... Um, do what I do even when I'm playing leagues on Magic Online, which is like, this game is pretty much over, I'm just gonna pack it up. Whereas, like, I think on, on Magic Online, people slog through what I what I would describe as miserable matchups more often. Sand seems great. Dreamcaller Siren seems very good in this matchup. Ritual of Soot, also decent. We've got, like, Kite Sail Freebooter to, like, force Ritual of Soot through. So uh, let's take a peek. Take a peek behind the veil, shall we? Scatter deal. Next turn I can go Kite Sail plus Dead Eye Tracker. Although honestly, I might want to hang tight here. Just because I do have this ritual of soot, which is gonna clean out my kite sail at some point. So yeah, I think I'm actually just gonna go ahead and pass here and just like work my way up to these dream caller sirens. Although maybe I, I should have stuck this to like clear the way for Dreamcaller, because like they're obviously passing with counter spells up, right? Attack, target creature that vividly loses all abilities. Interesting. Um, so I think I'm gonna lead on Kite Sail here so I could try and stick the fungal infection through this. So they have Wizard's Retort, uh, which they don't currently have active. Right, because this is not a wizard. I think I want to just take the wizard's retort though, right? Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and fungal infection the stork. And I think I'm just gonna like leave the ritual of soot as a fallback plan for now. Just like commit to the board and try and race them here.
Maybe a missequencing there on their part. They played the land out when they probably could have saved it to discard. They hit another one anyway, so like not that big of a deal. Contempt's a good draw. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and smash here. So we've got three power in play. This is gonna be six of the nine power in play, so we're gonna run them down pretty quickly. Yeah, I actually, I think Ritual of Soot is not only just a good card in general, but I also really like the, the way it plays out in a lot of games. Um, I like that you can construct your de I like that Ritual of Soot kind of allows you to play around it in nice ways. That animation is sweet. This is probably reading Dreamcaller Siren. This card's not particularly popular. Yeah, we played a, a mono red steam can like pseudo combo deck the other day and there are people that have been playing uh, thousand year storm combo decks Choose non non zero amounts of success. So non Zach, good evening. Yep. Come at me, bro. This dream caller siren's gonna stick it to you. Yeah, there you go, there you go. This might be a concession siren, honestly. Yeah. Has viability as a black sweeper. Yeah, I think it could alcohol. I think that card's very reasonable. I think there's uh I think there's a chance that it's very there's probably a delve deck that's interested in playing it. Like that's leaning on honestly, there might be a like blue black uh, like mid range control deck that plays like more than four delve creatures and ritual of stood as a sweeper you can play like a mix of like rituals and languish even because with mission briefing and thought scour you could basically play like up to eight thought scours right i mean who's to say it's not viable now spellweaver yeah a lot of modern is very very low to the ground which is why I think you need to explicitly lean into Delve Threats to leverage it, because, like, those are basically low-to-the-ground cards that, like, don't get blown up by it, right? Um, it's a little land-heavy, but it's got plenty of playable cards in it. Daring Saboteur might be able to, uh... Might be able to just throw a couple things depending on what the opponent's looking to do. It's like the mono blue deck again. Mono blue deck's pretty popular. It's an aggressive deck that's also cheap to build. Cheap aggro decks tend to be popular on uh, on ladder systems. Magic online too, even. Charter course is sweet. Just gonna go ahead and saboteur. Get this going. We drew a fifth land, so I really wouldn't mind looting through one of these with this uh, with this card. Obsession kind of sucks for us. This is the punish for not just jamming the cast down last turn for sure. Interesting. Okay, so huh. I think I'm gonna start by offering this trade here. Because I think, I think clear board favors us pretty solidly. And then, this is one of the things I think people mess up a lot. You don't need to cast... You don't need, we don't have to play our removal spells on on their turn. So just because this is an instant doesn't mean I have to wait. Let's just kill this now while they're tapped down. Insert witty anniversary message here. For the tier 3 of this month, I'll take a standard league of my choice. Sounds good, pun count. Will do. Thanks for the support. Really enjoying the standard format. I've been happy to see people are also, also into it. Had a bunch of a bunch of standard decks in the donation queue. And thank you, thank you for the 28 months and the tier three. That's uh that's a lot a lot. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and attack with the saboteur here. 
and see if we want to merfolk trickster rude rude tricky tricky um so they don't really have removal so i guess we'll hostage take her and take this merfolk trickster and then i can use that later sounds useful just snake just take that one please Uh, that's some other creator. So that's the one people have been asking about that I haven't gotten to work under wine. So I'm streaming from my wife's computer upstairs right now. So I currently have that set up and available. Uh, I think I'm starting with cast down here. Let's see where this goes. Good chance. Wow, no counterspell out of them is absurd for us. So I, uh, huh. No counterspell. So do I just, like, jam Jace here? I probably just want to want to increase my board presence, right? Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and kill their stuff. So let's kill that, and then let's smash them. And I've got this Merfolk Trickster in my hand. Uh, I don't think I need a Kaisal Freebooter at the moment. Let's ditch that. So we're going we're gonna to tricky, tricky that one. He lets us loot a lot of cards. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna board him out again, but he definitely lets us loot a lot of cards. And if they don't have a counter spell here, we're gonna get to like diddle this guy. Like they know about this Merfolk trickster, right? So like I assume they have a scatter. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. That being said, like even if they hit us here, like we're kinda winning this race at the moment. Tempest Jin. That's really annoying. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. We'll make this. Let's try this. Oh, this is for all of my creatures? That's much better than I thought. I thought I just targeted a couple. I should read my cards. If they block my pirate here, I get to, like, Dire Fleet Poisoner, kill their thing. And if they don't block it, yeah, just, like, all right, so Dire Fleet Poisoner. They're going to wipe their, their Tempest Gen out here, which should remove their ability to race. Oh, wait, do I only loot once? Oh, that's worse than I thought. So, I thought, I, I read this card wrong twice. I thought, I thought it gave, like, two target creatures a loot or something like that. Ikapu, thank you for the three-month resub there. I appreciate that. Welcome back. All right. MillaTK with the 32 months. That's so many months. Thank you very much and welcome back. Listen, chat, I am, I am a professional Magic the Gathering player. I do not need to read the cards. I just assumed it was Tamiyo. That's basically what I did. Alright, I get to Fungal Infection, the Mystical Carol, I get to Kite Sail, block this. Uh, yeah, Deny Tracker's not better than that. I just want to keep my health total high and make sure I'm winning this race, basically. They don't have... Their deck lacks catch-up mechanics, so I'm ahead. I just want to stay ahead. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw away my 1-2 here because I would prefer that they don't get to draw a card. So they're dead on board. Do I have to wait for GRMPT for an answer to Carnage Tyrant and Grixis? You have there's multiple answers to Carnage Tyrant and Grixis. Um Opponent conceded the best of three. Deal. Um, you have uh, Eldest Reborn and uh, that new Flashback Marauder that's better, the 3 2 Flashback Marauder. There's Discovery Dispersal. There isn't a clean sweep the board answer, but that's fine. There's, there's different things that give you play to it. What's my scripting language of choice? Python, not close. Plague Crafter. Yeah, that's the one. 
correctly in scripture, sure. And I actually think, like, all of these things, like, I love that there isn't just a damnation in this format. I think it makes for a lot more, not only interesting deck building decisions on both sides, but the lack of a, a damnation that just kills everything also makes it so the people playing the aggressive decks and the creature decks are able to play around these different things in different ways. Hand just doesn't do anything, right? Like, it's missing black mana and it doesn't have any threat, so pretty easy mulligan. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I'm, I'm all about this Admiral's Orders card. Alright, green cards, you say. Probably means this, uh... This kite sail's a little medium. Although, I guess if they're playing, uh... If they're playing tokens, this card has a lot of good targets here. Yeah, it smells like tokens. I don't even, like, not only are they too strong, I just think they're just, like, bad gameplay. Like, again, I think, I talk pretty constantly about things, things that are good gameplay, in my opinion, are things that, like, create play and counterplay, and generic board wipes that just, like, guaranteed kill everything don't do that. I don't, th I don't think that's true. I think, I think even Wrath of God's bad design. I think conditional sweepers are just, like, much, much better. I don't, I don't think I'm trading here. Yeah, I'm gonna trade here. This thing just makes so many tokens. Yeah, and that one costs five, right? So, like, the non-conditional sweeper costs more mana and more expensive. We're just about to get run over here, chat. Four threes. Four threes are pretty large. We don't really have good spot removal at the moment. This deck only has two cast downs in it. Those are very angry attackers. Wouldn't be too surprised to see another 4-3 hit play here. Even a Thorn Lieutenant's, like, not, not the best for us. They have, like, Thorn Lieutenant plus something else. Just, like, totally iced. Ice, ice, baby. Do, 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 do. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and smash here with both of these. And then go ahead and Dire Fleet Poisoner when he blocks. Oh, he's blocking there? That's so good for me. So I get to poison her this. Could I possibly add a new deck to the queue with the tier 3 description? Of course, scanning gear. Um, you can use the form as always. So tier 3, tier 3 subs. Use that uh, use that form just like everybody else. So feel free to submit something through there and I'll get back to you real, real soon. Would have been a crafty cup. If they're playing tokens, crafty cuppers could just like savage them down the line. I'm going to bend the saboteur and then I'm going to go ahead and march of the drowned to pick two of these dorks back up. So I'm going to grab uh, Saboteur and Freebooter here, I think. So we'll see here. If they don't if they don't play this Conclave Tribal this turn, I get to just go ahead and Freebooter them again, which is nice. This has Death Touch itself, right? This card seems really... There, there seems like a lot of really sweet payoffs for being in Pirates. Yeah, I'm not too surprised to see this get forced through. It lets it take my Death Toucher off the table, which is good for them. Lets them attack. Gets their spell out of their hand for the Kite Sail Freebooter. But, like, now I just get to, like, hit with this and just, like, loot, loot away the Freebooter, right? I'm a little bit behind on board, which kind of sucks. Hostage Taker. Is that one good, chat? What do we think? What do we think of that one? What if I grab this here Knight of Autumn? This card's great. They don't, have, they don't have a Doom Blade here. This Hostage Shaker could help us take this game back over. Five dollars if you cut person march the multitudes in. We actually have a second cut person on the board too for the tokens matchup. No blocks. Give it to me. It's pretty good. This application is so good, Perkins. 
It's been a while. I hope you're doing well. So, yeah, I think, I think we kill, I think we definitely kill the Conclave here, right? Because the Conclave is going to give me back a Death Toucher. So, like, I could make a 4-3 to, like, keep their, keep their stuff at bay, but, like, this is going to keep their stuff at bay, too. Boxes forever. When Christy and I move in the spring, we're planning to just, like, get rid of a bunch of stuff, I think. Mostly because I don't want to pack a lot of it up. I think we've kind of stabilized the board here. Wow, that's an aggressive attack. All right, so this is pretty free here. This is a trade. And then I want to double up here. They got to flip this over though, which means I'm going to need to be aggressive through that, which kind of sucks. Yeah, they wanted, they wanted to flip the landing, which makes a lot of sense. Dreamcaller Siren, that's not the worst. Oh, Cut Purse. All right, so do I just... Huh. Do I just, like, Cut Purse their one token here? I think I just Cut Purse their one token. I think they have Lifelink too, right? Yeah, they do. I think I just get aggressive here. A dollar emote? Maybe. I do have one open at the moment. Alright, so Lai is, like, annoying, but not the end of the world. I say that, that attacking seems really aggressive. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the Salai. And then, um... I think this Daring Saboteur is worth not trading off here, but the rest of these are definitely fine, right? Especially this one with Lifelink. Did you say that you couldn't get Arena working in Wine? No, Arena works fine under Wine. The um, the Deckmaster extension is something that I couldn't get working under Wine, but there's a couple other things that I need to try still. But Arena itself works perfectly fine under Wine. Yeah, Cannon Gear, can you... um? Can you DM me that as a reminder? Otherwise, I'm just going to forget. Because I don't have anything to write it down on here offhand. Hey, Sean. Thanks for the host. Welcome to folks coming over from Sean. I think Sean was playing Modern this evening. I'm currently playing some Standard here on Arena. Arena is very slick if you haven't tried it. 10 out of 10 would recommend. And we're pretty far ahead here. We're going to get to, like, Dreamcaller Siren, like, diddle two of their, diddle two of their dorks here. And just like keep keep giving them the business basically um i don't think they're attacking so i'm just gonna let them let the, let this happen i guess if they have a bigger threat they might attack here but if they have a bigger threat i'd also like would rather wait and diddle the bigger threat <laughs> the animation on this card is so great how many dorks do I have in here? I've got a bunch of dorks in here. This card has been so good. I would like two pirates, please. I would like this one. Uh, I would like this one and this one. Please and thank you. Combat, attack. It's not even just like one mana draw two. It's like one mana draw two spells, right? That's much better than one mana draw two. Like we're going to trade tokens here. Really? We're not trading tokens. That's interesting. So they're going to take 6-5 here, basically. So this is not lethal then, right? Because they're taking 6 and this is gaining them 1. If they block the token, I actually kill them with the Dire Fleet Poisoner, which they know about. So they can't block here. They actually have to block here. So, like, not trading with the token seems weird, but they actually can't block the token because then I'll kill them with the Dire Fleet Poisoner. Creatures you control get 2-2. Two, two. Um, sure. 
So this lets them uh, lifelink here for six, but then they're still dead on the backswing, right? So they're effectively at nine. Fungal infection is lethal. Let's pick that one right off there. I do. I know. I know my marketing, Cletus. Come on now. I understand what I'm doing here. That's not by accident. Uh, just the latest wine staging, like staging a uh, staging 3.17. The installer doesn't have text, but the actual game itself works. If you look at the app DB page, I created an entry for it, and a couple other people did too. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Definitely a crafty, definitely a crafty cut purse matchup. Definitely a crafty cut purse matchup. Uh, probably, I don't know if this is a Nagate matchup or not. Um, they have, they have like a pretty solid mix of like creatures and non-creatures, right? I feel like I just want like my lookout dispersals and my admiral's orders. This is probably not a contempt matchup. It's a little expensive. Although I also do need ways to like kill some of their bigger things. Maybe this is not a dead eye tracker matchup. I'm not sure if that kite sail freebooters because I'm bringing in the rituals of soot. I'm bringing this last hostage taker for more bigger removal. One biggest complaint here is I don't have a total down here. I need one more, one more card to bring in here. Divest reveals a card to an artifact or creature. I feel like that card's gonna miss enough that I'm not gonna be happy with it. They do need to kill Sahili. It's a lie. I'm gonna bring in one, leave one contempt in. One contempt and a few hostage takers seems fine. I guess cast down could just be like straight bad in this matchup. It doesn't kill Amara and it doesn't kill Salai. So maybe I should just like trim both of those. Sahili, Sahali, Shalali, Lollipop, the, the white lollipop. It's gonna, gonna, gonna get the white lollipop. Um, I had two standard decks built on Arena for a $100 gem purchase and the intro pack. So it was like 120 bucks between it. The, uh, that sounds okay. Like not amazing, but fine. Um, the biggest cost on arena is the number of rares in the deck. So like the, the rare lands are like kind of the bottleneck. That's the big thing. The, the one thing they need to address in the economy is the rare, the rare wild card bottleneck. And after that, the economy actually seems pretty reasonable. Oh, they're Abzan. I totally missed that they're Abzan. I like that this Dire Fleet Poisoner lets me trade with this Thorn Lieutenant without giving them a token, so that feels pretty good. Amara, yep. That is one I cannot cast out. card seems really good it is a touch awkward that i don't uh that i don't have a way to kill this again maybe this should just be a different card uh, i kind of want to dispersal that I guess I'm just letting it happen. Oh, you know what? I could have opted this turn and dug for... I think I'm just casting that one down. Hostage taker is exactly what I want for Christmas. Uh, I saw that it was posted, but I didn't look at the details surrounding it. Alright, if they don't have a Doom Blade here, we get to get their Amara going next turn. Hostage Shaker's been really impressive too in these like against these creature decks that are like kind of light on removal. Just very, very powerful effect, right? That's unfortunate. Probably means they have the the exile thing. Had approval for this deck yesterday. Thank you, Slug Monster, for the bits. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's the tribunal. It's a little unfortunate. Or 
working. I'm streaming from my upstairs computer right now, so I'm working with only two monitors, which is a, a change of pace for me. So... If they attack here, I might just crafty cut burst, which, like, gives me this token and, like, lets me trade. Yeah, so in response to this trigger, I'm going to crafty cut burst. And thank you for the bit select monster. I appreciate the support. How long till red, white aggro? About a half hour. Usually do, like, 60 to 90 minutes with each deck. Just, like, get my trade on here. 11 months of giving you money to play children's card games. What am I doing with my life? Polar Scribe, thank you. Thank you for the 11 month resub there. Welcome back. You are a month away from that mod sword. Find is so good. That is definitely a sweet card worth splashing. This card is very, very powerful. It is unfortunate that Dreamcaller Siren can only block creatures with flying. Otherwise, it would just be an absurd, like, misbind click like card. Really wish that could block non-flyers here. Uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and play Saboteur out here to encourage them to keep Amara at home. And then I have the Dire Fleet Poisoner to, like, trade with the Thorn Lieutenant or possibly, like, gobble up tokens. Alright, just swinging for the fence, huh? Might be going to a game... Excuse me, might be going to a game three here soon. Getting a little bit outground. Uh, because I am streaming from a different room in my house, so... Christy does, uh, Dungeons and Dragons downstairs, uh, with a group of her friends on Wednesday nights, so... Uh, I am streaming from my upstairs computer. Actually, part of the reason why I built a new computer this year is so I could have a backup, a backup rig for streaming. March of the Drowned continues to just be absurd, totally and completely. Um, I think I just want those to you, right? Crafty Cup Burst is, like, too good to pass up here. Cup Burst is a little bit worse when they know about it, but I think it's still fine. Yeah, that can resolve. So, this Dire Fleet Poisoner is going to trade with Thorn Lieutenant again here. here if they have a if they have a payoff here that i'm not able to dispersal we're probably going to be dead to rights that's brutal we all we all have draw twos you get draw twos and you get draw twos ritual is it oh you're not a rich guy could you imagine how good ritual it would have been here it just like pull us like straight back into the game it's like kicking and screaming I'm gonna hang out for another draw step here. Well, of course, we could hit a ritual set. They attack with everything. I crafty cut first in response to this trigger. Uh, cut first trades with the Amara. Um, the token we get from the Amara ch chumps the Thorn Lieutenant. Uh, we take three altogether down to five once we gain a point of life here. Again, just like looking for one of our three copies of Ritual of Soot. That is not going to do it, I don't think. I guess I have another draw here, because they're going to, like, end step make a token, and I'm going to crafty cut first that token. We're dead, Jim. Getting the leverage find in their tokens deck is really powerful. Jace seems abysmal here. Uh, this, these cast downs like also don't seem stellar. A hey, full metal adept with that tier three resub for the 16th month in a row. Thank you very much and welcome back. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Remember that the forum is open for you, you all always. So feel free to submit through there the deck you would like to see added. Or if there's deck already in the queue, you can let me know and I'd be happy to bump that up. Thanks everyone for hanging out here tonight. We got uh, 550 people. That's not bad for a stream time that I'm not normally on. My my non non normal times always have a little bit low lower concurrence.
Waiting for game three here against an Abzan tokens deck. <clears throat> Looks mostly like green white splashing uh, fine so far. I don't think I've seen any other black cards out of them. Um, I don't know if this is great, but it's definitely keepable. <clears throat> I don't know that I I don't know that I like this card in this deck. I think this is a card that I've been a little bit found a little bit lackluster so far. This might be something that we that we trim here. It's one of the upsides to playing on arena is that uh, because I'm not locked into a league on here, I can just uh, swap cards in between while we're testing stuff. I don't think so. I think I'd rather have Kite Sail Freebooter before um, before that. I'm not sure that I even have room for that in my deck. Just a friendly reminder to people that are not familiar with the stream, if you want to provide feedback on what we're doing here, that's encouraged, but you need to be constructive. You need to be specific. If you want to say something negative about the deck, you need to tell us a uh, good way to fix it, you know, present present better options, etc. Yeah, definitely full metal. Will do. Um, I actually might want the Field of Rune here, so I'm going to bin the Drown Catacomb for now, because they have the, uh, the flip thing. That is a history of Banalia. Yep. I guess I get a Crafty Cut Purse, the history token next turn, which is decent for us. I guess that seems fine. Do I want to offer this trade here? I kind of do, right? Well, I guess next turn I could, like, cast down it. So, response to this trigger. I'm going to go ahead and grab your Knight token here. A good use for our cast down here, which is nice. Uh, this attack is like incredibly aggressive, right? Yeah, like they're tr they're trading this for like one of my two twos, which just seems very bad for them. I'm happy to trade here, I think. Although this is just a, like a better trade for me, right? I think so. I don't, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what thought what the text box on thought erasure is offhand. So you can see here when I hire, ho hover over Daring Saboteur, it wants to leave my Field of Rune up when I activate this. So to avoid that, to make the auto tap do what I want, if I float from Field of Rune and now I hover, it's going to use that mana in my pool plus two other lands. So it's very easy to kind of massage the um, massage the auto tapper into giving you the desired outcome. Oh, Thought Erasure is the discard, the discard a card. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm still I'm still learning what the names of all these all these things are in standard. Yeah, I could see Thought Erasure being okay. Let's take now that no, we've played a few games with it, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at um, take a look at the deck list here in a hot second and try to feel out what uh, what could be good and what could be bad. Tristani is pretty good. This attack is decent for us. So I get to go ahead and just like axe this Knight of Autumn here, and then um, I think I just have to take this hit. You gain control of your own stuff, but this is my token. Get you. This is actually really good against Hostage Taker, huh? So if we're Hostage Taker, we're just like taking uh, taking two twos at this point. I guess I go ahead and do this. Uh, I think I'm going to bend that. Oh, this gets bigger when it explores, right? It seems still seems really slow. Oh, cancel attacks. Do not do not want. Do not want. No attackers. End. And the target of a spell or an ability the opponent controls created one. So I can't I can't even diddle this is the problem. So I guess I'm gonna do this and like diddle. Diddle Tristani and a Tutu. -two. 
Yeah, slug. For sure. Uh, I think I'm activating this because I kind of need to hit a Doom Blade. I kind of need to hit a Doom Blade or something here. And this can't block, so it might as well attack. That's actually kind of a tough nut to crack here, so... Huh. I think I'm supposed to bin the Dream Caller and play the Hostage Taker here, huh? And then just, like, take out their 3-3 three, three knight. I think that's the line. I'm not, like, excited about it, but our other options aren't fantastic. I could, like, risk it for the biscuit and, like, take the Tristani out. But then, like, if they have any removal spell, they, like, get their Tristani back and get two more 2-2s. Two which is just, like, kind of unbeatable. With this line, I could potentially just, like, tempo them a little bit and maybe race. If they have a six land here, the Thorn Lieutenant becomes even bigger and angrier. Yeah. Shock, aggressive. Finality, woof. Woof. That is... All right, give me a Doom Blade. That is a daring saboteur. All right. Um... Well, I just have to chump block next turn, don't I? Because this thing is just, like, going to be an 8-8. No, I don't have to chump block. That's good. I get to get to get in a hit with this. I would like to, I would like to find a Ritual of Soot, ideally, here. That was that was an aggressive an aggressive fatality. All right, put me to two. Nope. Okay. We're probably dead here. Alright, I can draw soot, right? I've been really bad at drawing soot in this deck. Yeah, three of them, post board. Yeah, it's gonna be all she wrote. Close game. Alright, so what do we wanna do here? Let's take a let's take a peekaboo at what we've what we've got here so far. Look at that. Look at that. We got some prizes. We got a booster pack. Uh, so pirates here. Edit. Um, Dead Eye Tracker has been pretty, pretty mediocre. Not really been happy to draw this card terribly often. Uh, Jace, Cunning, Castaway. Uh, he just has a hard time protecting himself. And, like, he can't really generate card advantage ever. So... This is another card that we just trimmed a bunch. I could see, like, maybe relegating this card to the sideboard if I was interested in, um... If I was interested in potentially having a Planeswalker to bring in against control decks, but I think I would trim this. I think Admiral Orders is pretty significantly worse than Lookout's Dispersal. Like, Counter, unless you pay 4, is a ton of mana. So, I think I'm definitely going to get Lookout up to a 4x here. Use one of my 200 uncommon things here and add one of those in. Um, Crafty Cup Purse is sweet. I think it being in the main deck is probably too cute. It could be fine. I definitely want the last Hostage Taker. I don't want too many fours, but I think getting four of these in the 75 is definitely where I want to be in life. Um, Daring Saboteur has been pretty good. I kind of wouldn't mind, uh, another copy of this in the main. Gonna, like burn all my all my robots. It's almost it's almost time to give Wizards of the Coast more of their money back, chat. It's almost time to give them more money. I think I'm gonna trim these Admiral's orders. Someone else recommended uh, Thought Erasure, and that doesn't seem completely unreasonable. I don't know how many of these that I want, but like a non-zero amount of them is probably fine. This is enough. Let's just search. Let's search pirate really quick. Take a peekaboo at what the what the blue and black ones are. Just to make sure I'm not missing anything too 
Siren Storm Tamer is pretty okay. I think this card has has some reasonable text on it in some spots. War Kite Marauder, when this attacks, a creature the defending player control loses all abilities and becomes an 0-1. That makes blocking really miserable for them. I can see this being okay. I don't know. I feel like this is probably worse than the uh, than the saboteur on average. I've been pretty happy with saboteur. And then once we get up into here, they just kind of get too expensive. Yeah, those are probably this card. This card is really sweet. Oh, fathom fleet captain. When this attacks, if you control another. Attacks, if you control another non-token pirate, pay two. If you do, create a two-two. This card seems really good, right? This card actually seems really good. So it's evasive. When it attacks, if you control another non-token pirate, you pay two. And, like, this card kind of combos with Dire Fleet Poisoner in a way. Because, like, if they have to double block this, like, they put two bigger creatures in front of it. And then you're just, like, Poisoner kill both your guys. That, that actually seems very reasonable. Also, just like having having a pirate by two to curve out into lookout dispersals up for cheaper seems good too. I'm gonna trim this crafty cut first to the board and put the last uh, last fathom fleet captain in. And then let's take a look at the sideboard here. I definitely want I definitely want two. I definitely want two crafties in the board. He's been pretty sweet. It was pretty sweet in the tokens matchup. I think I want the, the Ritual of Soots for the same thing. I think I want another Spyglass in here. Uh, I think Divest is pretty bad. I think uh, you, would you would basically almost always in any creature matchup rather just like have another way to kill a creature rather than just be like trying to take creatures out of their hand. I'm trying to think of a place where I want these Siren Storm Tamers. I'm kind of having a hard time coming up with one. I guess I could potentially want like another card advantage style card to board into that's like a threat. It's good against Settle the Wreckage. Okay, that's probably reason enough to keep it in there. Let's do let's do this for now. Let's play another play another game or two. Probably play one more here and then move on to Boros. If your opening hand doesn't contain any early plays, consider taking a mulligan. What if I want to die, though? <clears throat> Thanks, Trudon. It felt okay. Just like good, good quality, reasonable Magic the Gathering cards. A list very similar actually won the Modern Challenge on Magic Online on Saturday. Um, sure. Sand's a little poisonous, but uh, it definitely seems very reasonable. And again, just like, this card is basically a Doomblade. It's like double Doomblade in some situations, right? Where you just, like, attack in into an unsuspecting block. It's basically, like, a combat trick that then, like, kills something else later, too. Which is sweet. Alright, what are you, what are you doing over here? Bant stuff? That, um, huh. All right, uh, huh. I think I take this Gift of Paradise. The rest of this hand is pretty slow. I think I just go ahead and get aggressive and Dire Fleet Poisoner here. Uh, they can't Tefri me next turn, so I want to just like get him my extra point of damage. I'm gonna play this at end step anyways. Yeah, but like they ripped the third land last turn, so like if they would have ripped the third land and had this gift, the gift would have gained them health and then ramped them into playing the rest of their hand. 
And, like, Gift plus Tefri plus Nexus is, like, a very powerful combo. Yeah, yeah. The, fun the Fungal's actually sweet here because, like, it's just a 1-1 one -one for 1 against the Control deck when I have an X2, right? They kept a card that wasn't a land, so, like, I'm kind of expecting them to have a removal spell here, right? And I'm not gonna play both of these, because I want to hold up this Lookout Dispersal here, I think. I'm, like, really trying to, like, tank on, like, what they could have kept here that wasn't a land. Alright, they have some kind of play, because we're paused here. Yeah, it's on SCG's website. You can also find... I wrote an article about my team this, my team experience this weekend for Cool Stuff Inc. So, bit.ly forward slash Google articles. Should be a command, I think. Yeah, that right there. I think you just don't have room for a threat that expensive, Rolf. I have to imagine this matchup's really good for us. If this matchup's not good for us, our deck's probably not good. So need to cut six cards. Uh, pretty easy cuts on the removal spells. Hostage taker's not very good. Might be too many. I'll just bring in uh, crafty cuppers. Uh, maybe the blink of an eye is fine. Blink of an eye seems fine. Yeah, it could have been a settle. That's a good read. They could keep that to like draw, draw to another land the following turn. Actually, this March of the Drown probably isn't very good. A lot of their removal is probably exile based. How did the duresses get out of my deck? I must have clicked on the wrong thing. I think I want to leave. You can turn that off, Slug Monster, but I think, um, I think by and large, it's pretty good. There's a lot of people, pe I feel like people overvalue how much extra value you get from little things like that. And it does have the ability to turn it off. So if you want to be super serious, yeah. You can toggle on full control mode when you want to bluff. Like a lot of, especially these aggressive and mid-range decks, and especially the very early turns of the game, there's no value to be gained. You're just wasting time. And that's one of the things that Arena, I feel like, does really well. It adds the f the fluidness of removing some of that clunkiness while still get providing you with the ability to have that full control when you need it. Yeah, I feel like we have a ton of really good tools for a control deck in our, in our sideboard here. If we have, like, a good mix of, like, lands and non-lands, we should be in a good spot here. We're going to get to curve, like, Storm Tamer into Kite Sail here. Just, like, have a really strong curve. Yes, yeah, magic. Every every time my opponent on arena just like isn't. Well, this is definitely how we could lose this game. Um, every time my opponent on arena like isn't using the. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play one more match here with the changes. Obviously, the changes are very good. Opponent conceded to kite sail freebooter. play one more and then we're gonna play a little bit of boros aggro to wrap things up yeah the people that don't use the auto tap are the stone cold worst especially when like they like have two planes in play and they like float their mana to cast their spell it's like what are you doing with yourself i mean if they were ghosting they probably wouldn't have conceded there one here look at all look at all the frills on the sides of my thing maybe if people play enough arena they will get used to that pace of play and the justice will call you for slow play <laughs> oh my alerts aren't that's really weird that the bit alert was different the sub animations are my custom animations right I wonder if streamlabs having issues tonight Uh, honestly, Sines, I think um, people on Magic Online don't concede enough. Like, there are a lot of people that play for the, the 2% and their 90-10 and the 10% or the 5% even. Like, these games where they are a strong favorite to lose than they should. I'm not sure 
I'm not sure that control decks are where are where we really need extra help with this deck. So, like, traditionally speaking, decks like this, tempo decks with, like, discard spells and counter spells tend to devour controlling strategies. I recently got into Hearthstone. I remember you years job. Do you have any specific resource I should check out to learn about the cards, the format, and deck lists and stuff? Now, there's, there's a ton of stuff for Hearthstone. The game's huge, Average Bloom. I haven't. I stopped following it. Uh, the when the when the new game Wonder kind of wore off for me, it stopped being exciting. Let's go ahead and get. So you'll notice here. I didn't really talk about my kite sail trigger. So my kite sail trigger there. I elected not. I elected to take the essence getter as opposed to the lightning strike because that forced my opponent to lightning strike my worst creature should they want to get their essence getter back. Notice that you haven't talked much about AOS if I stop playing that as well. No, AOS is uh, my go-to tablet game. They are currently waiting to update their online client with some balance patches that they're testing out. They're going to test out uh, banning a couple of cards, I think they said. So I am kind of waiting for those to go through before I stream some more. I also, like, really wanted to stream some Arena and Standard tonight. So, And this this gets to double as a job. So, like, if I felt like streaming Standard, I felt like I should do this. I played a bunch of... A bunch of champions this weekend, actually, when we were driving in the car on my tablet. Because I spent, spent 10 and a half, 11 hours in a car this weekend. Huh. So, they have an essence scatter here. Yeah, I'm streaming from a Windows system upstairs, so the, the card overlay works A-OK -okay on Windows. Yeah, Balthazar. It seems like it. Like, when I when I did the poll online, it seemed like there was a ton of people that were interested in seeing standard content, so. How's AOS going to work if they nerf cards online? I think they're only making small, they're thinking about making small changes, like adjusting the total amounts of points that some champions use. I don't, I don't know exactly what their plan is to handle it in paper. I don't know. I don't really plan to play their game in paper too much, so. Uh, I could just, like, jam the stream caller siren. I could also just, like, jam the poisoner. I think I'm actually just gonna jam the poisoner here. And then let this resolve and just hold up the lookout dispersal because getting the second pirate into play here means my Fathom Fleet captain can start making tokens. I just want to, like, kind of hide under this lookout dispersal while I get under them, ideally. No worries, Bloom. You family, family first. Always. I'll, I'll be here. From, trust me, I'm not going anywhere. If they have niv it, we're kind of up a creek without a pedal here. Because niv it cannot be countered. He's a rude dude. If they don't have a niv it and I get to attack, if I get to trigger this thing next turn, they're going to be in big trouble. This deck is immune to fiery cannonade. Yes. Yes, it is. Which is huge upset against a deck like this. Like, my blue-red decks had a bunch of fiery cannonades in them. So, would not be surprised if the opponent's deck does as well here. And like, we have six power in play, right? Like, they're dead in two. Got this, uh, this super mana leak up here. What if we didn't? What if, what if we didn't? That was great. Much better than the raid counter spell. Raid counter spell would have been... Oh, I guess the raid counter spell would have been the same there, right? Because the raid triggers through end of turn. I assume we're going to see Captain eat it here. <laughs> Hope we get something good. How much have I bought into Arena 4? Yeah, I have, uh... I have given Wizards of the Coast, uh, $650 so far. I, I have to keep track of all of it for tax purposes. Because, because this is my, my job, I get to write all this off. I think I just kill Ral here, right? 
Although the downside here is if I attack Ral and they have any removal spell here, I then don't get to kill Ral. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna face them actually. Control another non-token pirate. Control another non-token pirate. Maybe two. Oh, I get to do this every turn, right? Yeah, that's just like the nuts. There are so many sweet things to do in this format, it's kind of absurd. I feel like they should have iced my fat. This was a good addition to this deck. This card's very, very good. Still that on board. Oh, they get to uh, they get to rouse something here, and they're not dead on board. All right, I'm gonna fungal infection my my dire fleet prisoner here. Again, just like turning this into a one one, like not not great, but also not bad. The Fungal Infection just, like, turning into a 1-1 has been relevant two games in a row, which has been kind of sweet. Why would Black Green Midrange have to be rough? Like what 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 details about that make it make it seem like it has to be bad? <laughs> Time to choose. Voice so exciting. I love the voice lines on Rail. They're so good. Sweet. Right. Heading to board here. Thanks for doing more arena. Got my sub. Skip ten. Thank you for the four month three subscription. And I appreciate the people that are letting me know they like the arena content. Definitely, like I said, the stuff, the content on this channel is very viewer focused, so if viewers aren't into it, we're not playing it. So, thanks for thanks for letting me know and thanks for the resub. Thanks for keeping me employed here. 63. I need some more cuts here, so maybe I don't want both spy glasses. Originally, I had voted no preference for which program you played standard on, but now it's certainly Arena. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think most reasonable people that give Arena a chance are going to prefer Arena. I don't know what Pirate Forerunner does. And again, this is a viewer-submitted deck list, so... Yeah, I don't think... I think part of the reason Arena is so smooth is because it doesn't have to... Oh, that's... That's so much mana. Look at the curve on this deck, chat. Just like I don't, I don't want to add things that cost that much mana to the deck. Yeah, cast down could be okay for the crackling drakes. Just again, like I think there's, there's, it's very easy to like take this deck's curve and like drag it up a ton, and I don't think you want to do that. I think uh, some of the appeal of and the power of what this deck is doing is because it's low to the ground. Gosh, this hand is just like absurd with a second land. Yolo. We're, we're, up, we're up a game. Right? Famous last words. Famous last words. We're up a game. I'll keep it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Will our greed consume us? Will our greed consume us? Ayo. Not ideal, but we got there. Cause I'm free, free booting. Do do do, do do do. Scale of one to dead. Where's this free booter at? Dead side of the scale. Got it. Still get to take a peek up here. Strike double Drake. Ugh. Ugh. I I don't actually know that we're gonna be able to beat double Drake. 
on the draw, missing a land draw. Yeah, maybe I do need to leave the cast downs in. Although on the play, I can probably just like plan to look out to dispersal these drakes. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and. Yeah, I think boarding out the cast downs was wrong. It's possible they have like more drakes in their 75 too. Tan was a bit too clunky. Which? When did I get a standing desk and ballpark? How much? Uh, I've had the standing desks for. Uh, almost a year now. I don't think I'd recommend this brand. The electronics of them actually have some issues in them when they're they're going up and down. But in general, they run anywhere from like four hundred to to a grand, depending on what uh, what make and model you're gonna look to get. I think uh, when I move in the spring, I'm gonna end up paying a little bit more and get a higher quality one. What time did I start? We've been going for about an hour and a half now. I think I want I think I want these cast downs in my deck. I'm gonna trim this spyglass just like plan to kill Tefri via via pressure or or counterspell it. Tefri blah, 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 Ralph, Eric, whatever his name is. Where am I moving to? We're just moving to a different a different uh place inside of Bloomington. We're not we're not fully relocating. We wanna move to a different school district for the kids before they start kindergarten. We didn't really look for that when we moved into this house originally, like four four years ago. And Jake Jake starts kindergarten next fall. Maybe this is a trim. It's, like, expensive. Let's do that. Yeah, that, I can't I can't recommend a standing desk enough. Um, just, like, in general, if you're if you're someone who uses the computer for, like, five plus hours a day, it's a good, good quality of life change. I am, Cookie Lord. I am. Yeah, this scene looks sweet. Uh, March of the Drown. I feel like this card's just absurd in this matchup, right? It's like, draw two, draw two creatures you've had to kill. Blink and strike. Well, this is an easy strike. Let's get rid of that one forever. Probably blink here. Let's see what they picked up. Yep. Alright. You have one thing. Uh, no, I wouldn't recommend the brand that I have. Like I said, I'm probably going to pick up a different one when we end up moving. I would get one sooner, but I don't want to have to, like, assemble and disassemble a new one. So, I just recommend doing some research. There's a bunch of different brands that do varying quality. Home and, uh... That's a pretty decent pickup. Uh, I have an uplift desk. They're one of the, like, bottom of the floor cheapest model ones. Which is probably why the electronics have some issues. So they can Drake here. But then, like, this attack in with the Dire Fleet is pretty good. Oh, jeez. This thing counts the blink of an eye in exile. Huh. You need a player on my combat trick and constructed. No call, coward. Cowards can't block warriors, opponent. That's what I thought. The exile zone is basically just like lost all value as like being another zone it's it, it, it or it's just like lost all values being like an actual exile zone. it's just like another zone that we use as a resource now which is kind of annoying if they attack here i might just like jam this this dire fleet poisoner and just like start pounding them just like need to race this thing right I'm gonna march to the drowned here and just like force the issue on this uh on this blink of an eye. I 
All right, what you got? Have a blink and other stuff. So, since they're basically on E here, I'm gonna go ahead and offer this daring saboteur for the crackling Drake here. And like what I assume is gonna happen here, they're gonna block, I'm gonna poison her, they're gonna bounce, but then like their bounce doesn't draw a card, so I think that's a win for us. This is a little bit past my bedtime, you're not wrong, Trey. Slushy roads, where is it? That's gross. Oh, they bounced their dr Oh, okay, this is, that's a, that's an interesting line from the opponent, because, like, bouncing their Drake there means that they get to draw another card with it, right? And, like, they're working on pretty low resources, so I really like this line out of them. All right. Oh, I shouldn't have played the land, right? So I'm going to get to loot that land away. That was, that was definitely a mistake. I guess I get to like stick the dream caller siren. Um, oh, that's so that's so close. Like if they draw another Drake here, I'm gonna feel sad. But I think I'm supposed to keep my threat. Feels bad, man. All right, so in response to this trigger, let's diddle it. I do have a lot of pressure here in play. Like I get to I get to diddle this and then I get to hit them for seven next turn, which is a good good chunk. I'm like, this is unblockable. I would love to loot, thank you. Yeah, getting pretty punished for the aggressive or the flame land up before. That's fine, they're at four, they're done on board, right? Need uh, need something live here. That's a pretty good one. If they have a spell here, we are very dead. If they have like a, a shock or a lightning strike here, they get to like kill this, zap this. It's very, very dead if they have any spells here. All right, well, let's do this before so I don't just get savaged. I guess if they had an essence scatter here, I could get savaged. That's a good one. That's that is a that is a good one to take away, chat. That is that is a good good one to get rid of. This little lady's got death touch, so let's just get on in here. It's an obligated block. All right, we need uh we need one one big fat big fat brick out of them, chat. I would love to take action. All right, show me potato salad. Oh jeez. Oh, jeez, they does it when they draw cards. I forgot about that. So their draw step counts that too. I haven't played against this card yet. Oh, we are so dead. All right, all right. Niv is taking over the game. Niv, Niv is taking over the game. Oh, no, that means they drew a spell. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Uh, sure. Why didn't why didn't they shoot me? I'm so confused. Uh, I think we're dead. Yeah, where's collective right? Where's collective brutality? I need more. I need more reach. Need some cowbell. What we really need is uh. Well, that's not bad. Uh, what we need is uh the. The other tappy pirate, right? We need another, we need another uh, dream caller siren here. Oh, I should have, I should have attacked, right? That's so dumb. I should have attacked because, uh, yeah, I punted this. All right, I'm gonna concede. I, because I wasn't thinking about what this card does and what it means for the board state. Yeah, yeah, super, super should have attacked, and then I had like the negate to cover Ral, and then we're actually probably ahead there. 
Yeah, I think I think we actually had the tools to beat that. I didn't think about the the fact that like that with the pump was lethal. And like I had the negate to back it up too in case they had something. Yeah, this deck uh, this deck seems pretty sweet. Um, it's just I keep saying that about most things in this format. So hopefully we don't get too many competitive events that change that that the tune. But Fathom Fathom Fleet Captain seems pretty awesome. I definitely want to play play some more um, play some more with that card for sure. Um, fungal Fungal Infection is um, is interesting. So it was a card that. Uh, is good against the aggressive red decks, but also, like, just turned into a 1-1 one, one for 1 in instant speed for us against uh, controlling matchups where it wasn't live. So, uh, this deck list, if you didn't catch all that, we played for about a little over an hour and a half. It'll be up on my YouTube channel later, as always. We got one more deck here before we're done for the night. They're going to play a little Boros aggro to wrap things.